Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Frisco and this is my podcast. Today on my podcast, um, we're going to take a look on Frisco housing market. Uh, my guest today will be Susanna Gip, uh, owner of uh, Gip Agency Insurance, and uh, we will talk about investing in real estate. Meet Mr. Frisco, a realtor selling residential real estate in Frisco and far north Dallas. As a former professional athlete, track and field and strength and conditioning coach, Mr. Frisco immigrated to the USA 20 years ago with $50 in his pocket, a suitcase, and zero English to pursue the American dream and build a successful real estate business. Hardworking, persistent, customer service, and detail-oriented, Mr. Frisco strives to secure a smooth closing on his client's biggest investment, their home. He puts his experience and knowledge to serve his clients the best way possible. Building his business by referral allows him to maintain relationships with his clients and serve them even after the transaction is closed. This is Frisco Realty News with Mr. Frisco. Let's see what's happening on Frisco real estate market in May. The median Frisco existing home price for May is 7.9% lower compared with the same time of the last year reaching uh, $650,000 and the median price for May decreased, uh, did not uh, change uh, compared with April. The inventory on the market is a 6.2% higher compared with the same time of the last year with 276 houses for sale on the market and it increased 35.2% in May compared with April. The median's existing home sales for May is 19.2% uh, lower compared with the same time of the last year, reaching 206 sold homes. Uh, but uh, we see some increase in the home sales lately. So for May, um, the home sales increased 28.8% compared with April. The medium days on the market in May is higher compared with the same time of the last year, reaching six days. But uh, the days on the market are increasing lately and it takes three days less in May to sell a home compared with April. The month supply on the market is 1.7 months, which is a still strong seller's market. Just to remind you the balance market we have when there is six months on, um, uh, of inventory on the market. And now it's time for my guest. Uh, let me introduce you to Susanna Gipp owner of a GIP Insurance Agency. Hey, Susanna, how are you? I'm doing very well, thank Great. you. Great. Thanks for having thanks, me. Uh, thanks for coming here and uh, be guest on my show, on my uh, podcast. So uh, you are in insurance. So it's a, a, a PC insurance to do commercial. We do a little bit of everything. I started selling group health benefits for my dad back in 97, back when group insurance was affordable. And then over the years, my clients would say, hey, uh, can you do our commercial insurance? And like any good salesperson, I was like, yes, yes, I can. I can. And so then I got my commercial license and added commercial insurance. And then they would say, can you do our home and auto too? And I was like, yes, 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 I can. And so um, we had, I don't really know. I'm sure there's some out there, but there are very few who have all three buckets of benefits, commercial insurance and home and auto insurance. And it just kind of works. So we keep doing it. All right. I just learned something new then. So you do you still are you still selling the ben uh, um, benefits? We do. When in 2008, when the whole economy went <laughs> terrible, um, a lot of my groups disappeared because a lot of people dumped their groups. The big companies with the dog and pony shows kind of came in and took the smaller market. Um, and so I don't really advertise for it, but people find me. There's not as many benefits brokers on the market like there used to be because Every time the administration talks about potentially making it part of, you know, health insurance for all, then I think health insurance brokers start abandoning ship. So um, we have specialists in our office that can do a little bit of both. And it makes it really nice because then for that 
business owner who is wearing multiple hats to begin with, they can slide, literally push all of their insurance across the table and just say, just take it. And we can't. All right. It seems to me that uh, you have been in the insurance business for a long time then. Benefits, insurance, that's, you know. No, I've been in the business over 25 years. Well, that's a long time. It is a long time. That's a long time. At year 20, I was like, wow, I guess I'm really doing this. (laughs) So how did you end up there? So just because your father or? My dad started an agency when I was in high school and I worked for him on the weekends. I would go in and stuff his mailers and secretly smoke cigarettes And then in high school, when I went to college, I got a theater degree, which is incredibly lucrative. And he was like, well, you know, you can always come and work for me here. And I didn't want to move back there. So I said, well, I'll work remote for you here. And so for a lot of that time, I was acting and I was doing insurance because when you're in sales, you have kind of a flexible schedule as long as you meet your quota. Nobody cares when you come and go, right? So I would go to seminars occasionally while I would shoot a commercial or a movie. And my clients weren't, I didn't tell my clients at all until Dallas went to the final four and I was in a commercial for TXU Energy and pretty much the gig was up. But then all my clients were like, oh my gosh, I saw you. I didn't know you did that. And they were all excited. So now everybody knows. Well, all right. So, um, when did you start your own agency? In um, 2021, I officially bought my book of business from my dad. And so, he still has his agency in Tyler, but he is close enough to retirement that investing a bunch of money into an agency, he may not ever you know, see those returns. And since I want to grow... Um, I splintered off, and I'm at year two of having my own business. Even though it felt like all those years I was running my own business because I was here by myself and he was there, but it's it's different. It is different. So you worked for your dad before, and then you bought the business. And did you start commercial and uh uh, PCB, um, we, uh, why are we working with your dad or you just started when you, when you got your own brokerage? No, I was always doing it because always I had clients it. who had my health clients and then they would be my commercial clients and then I would have their home and auto insurance. So it became a lot to manage, which was why it was really nice. And about 2018, I started bringing on staff to kind of help me do a lot of the service work because it was just, it was hard to manage, you know? Uh-huh. A long time experience in this business. That's great. So uh, a lot of people don't realize what's the difference between brokerage or just uh, directly shop from, um, you know, um, carriers like farmers or uh, State Farm. Can you explain what's the benefit to be a broker for or to shop with a broker? So State Farm agents can only sell State Farm. Farmers can only sell farmers. USAA. They're all the same. When you're an independent agency, which is like what we are, we have multiple markets that we can shop from. For example, we have carriers right now in the DFW market that are really trying to limit their exposure and they're trying to pull out. And so we're able to shift some of those clients who are getting really big increases over to the other carriers who have a little bit more competitive rates. All right. Um, So we had the big storms. So that seems, seems like every weekend there's a storm somewhere, mm-hmm. man. Like it's crazy. Yeah, I know. Uh, but if there is a problem, uh, I mean, some issue. Do the clients call you, or they call directly to the to the claim department? They can do. Clients can call us, or they can call in directly to the claims department. Sometimes they call us and they're like, "Hey, my roof is leaking. Should I file a claim?" So we're like. Is there a reason why your roof is leaking? Do you know? So sometimes we may say, hey, you know, your repair isn't going to be as much as your deductible. Don't even bother with the claim. But if they do file the claim, they have to go, the carrier is going to want to ask them questions. And we never seem to know all the answers. So we generally just refer them to the carriers because they have to say, like, who, was there a witness? What was their name? Just lots of details. And it makes the, the process go faster. What uh, what do you primarily focus focus um, primarily focus on auto home PC insurance or 
commercial or you just do both equally? I think our currently the book of business is 60% personal lines and then 30% commercial and 30% health, uh, health insurance. Personal question. Uh, what do you like more, the PC or the commercial? Oh, man, it's hard. It really depends on the day. Um, you know, you don't get into insurance because you really like insurance companies. You get into it because you like talking to people and and hearing their stories and feeling like you're helping them protect what's important to them. So if you're talking to a business owner and you get to catch up with them every year and see how their business grows and how it changes, that's really fun. But, you know, I've been fortunate to have clients for 20 years plus and see them into retirement and have their kids and their grandkids. That's really special. Yeah. Well, uh, people don't like insurance companies, especially when the renewal come and the, the premium is higher. And uh, God, so lately the premiums are going high. They're uh, really the terrible right now. There's a lot of things. Um, big, we've had a lot of storms, a eh? storm, storm, storms. Um, the tornado that came through the middle of Dallas in 2019 was a huge, huge loss to the carriers. I don't remember the numbers, but it, one of, it was one of the biggest claims to date in Texas. The and freeze? The, when are you talking about the, the freeze? No, I'm talking about 2019. The tornadoes came through. Oh, the tornado. Okay. And then okay. there was the freeze, which affected the whole state. So you have that on the bottom layers. And then you add in COVID, which had huge labor shortages. The prices went up. You know, if there was a while when there weren't many claims, people weren't going anywhere. And then when people started having more accidents, the labor was up, the price of goods was higher, it took longer to fix it, and they didn't factor those premiums, those claims numbers into the premiums. And so Geico had to shutter like 32 stores in California, Progressive, Travelers, State Farm all took huge, huge losses, some of the hugest losses they've taken in 10 years. So... I mean, it's a um, it's a pool of money. So if the insurance companies are spending out more than they are taking in, then they're going to raise rates. Um, I have clients that um, buyers, and it doesn't matter. I am I'm a realtor. I'm not a transactional realtor. I keep in touch with my clients after the transaction, so I help them with vendors with. Um, you know, insurance companies, contractors, and a lot of them, they, they say that it's very difficult now to find a 1% deductible for Texas uh, for storm and hail. Is that true? I... We are not having such an issue with 1% on the wind and hail. I think the bigger issue that we're seeing is um, replacement cost on roofs. All the carriers are starting to limit the amount of time that they're going to pay replacement cost. The average roof in North Texas lasts about nine years before a hailstorm will come and change it out. And the in insurance industry isn't set up to replace everybody's roof every nine years, but that's what's been happening. So a lot of the carriers, if your roof is older than 15 years, they're not going to cover it at replacement costs. They're only going to do actual cash value. But then there's some that are going down to even if your roof is more than five years old, they're going to go to actual cash value, which is kind of like... Um, They'll pay what it's worth at the time of loss. So the the the, uh, the time is shrinking. So from fifteen years to five. There's or some that are understand. already at five. Then there's nine. We have eleven and oh, then okay. fifteen. All right. And there's very few at this point who will do unlimited or lifetime replacement cost. But you can find one. Oh, I have them. <laughs> okay, that's good. Um, your primary focus is, um, you said, depend on the on the uh, depend on the mood of the day. Uh, <laughs> it depends or, on who I'm talking uh, to. But I mean, uh, some people say it's easier to work with uh, with companies. Uh, I enjoy to work with people. That's why I'm in the real estate business. Um, but commercial, um, you, you communicate with a lot of businesses. And a lot of people, a lot of small, I mean, um, 
uh, small business owners, I mean, um, entrepreneurs that in insurance and other stuff, they say, ah, it's much easier to communicate with businesses. Mm, do you think that is true? Even when you're communicating with a business, you're still communicating with certain people within the business. Yeah. So it's still the people business all day long. It's about customer service. It's about customer service. That's what I understand um, sometimes when somebody says, oh, it's much easier to communicate with businesses. But businesses are people, you know, that's the relationship. So having been in this long enough, it's it's nice when I walk into different kinds of businesses to know ahead of time what questions the underwriters are going to ask. Like if I'm going to go into a restaurant, I'm going to need to know how often they have their um, ducks and everything serviced, right? Or if I'm going to go into a manufacturing company, I need to know where the flammable liquids are housed and how much they have. So it's fun doing commercial because commercial is so different. Like every account can be really, really different. But again, it's that's really the beauty of our business, honestly, is that we can go in and make it easier for that one client and take every single bit of business that they want to give us and manage it all in one or two visits a year. So um, I have I have people that, um, because the premiums get very high, mm -hmm. and they sometimes share with me and say, hey, you know, I'm going to take out my uh, wind and uh, uh, storm and hail just for the sea uh for the rest of the season okay when uh when this is hell and, and storm season i'm gonna keep it up and then i'm gonna take it to save money mm. have you heard about that i mean that's the 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 risk right you can take you can shave off i agree water coverage you can shave mm. off foundation coverage you can shave off all these little things and save 200 here 300 here 400 here but then what if you have a water seepage loss and that's going to be about $8,000. So in the interest of saving $200, you now have an $8,000 claim. So it's tough. We are, but I get it, man. People got to save money somehow. So we are, that's why like 2% deductibles we're seeing more than we've had because people are like, no, I'll take the risk. Yeah. But I mean, they, they keep it, let's say only for the, uh, for the hail season. Mm -hmm. And then when the summer it comes, they just take it out. Mm, I don't know if that's. I'm surprised their carriers. If some you carriers can do probably that, allow that. I don't know. You can probably get away with it once, but the minute you start adding it back and forth, that's going to raise a red flag somewhere. All right. Well, there there are people that probably they do that. I don't know, but they they, they shared it with me. I said, hey guys, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, connect uh, with the insurance guys. They will tell you better. But uh, yeah, um, you know, people always try to get a loop or something. You know, mm -hmm. this is how how we are built. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Um, do you have agents under you, or this is uh, how many? So in our office, we have five agents. We have a couple service people, and then we have some um, people who work remote. Okay. And uh, if people would like to reach out to you, to find you, to uh, ask for a quote, uh, how they can find you? Yeah. Go to uh, GibAgencyDallas.com and you can connect with us there. Um, I also, we have a podcast as well, and you can find us at SusannaGib.com, which has links to Gib Agency Dallas as well. Okay. Um Everybody said, ah, Texas is horrible, you know, with uh, this hell and storm and, uh, you know, but I, I believe each state has some issues. Um, California, uh, earthquakes, uh, Florida, uh, hurricanes, Louisiana, hurricanes. Texas has everything, God, except earthquakes. But we have hell, we have tornado, we have hurricanes on down south in Houston. Uh, so we're kind of pretty much beaten. Yeah, we don't have a big forest fire issue like... California does. And we are in better shape than Florida. Florida is a hot mess. There's so many insurance carriers that are pulling out of the state. But people are really surprised when they move to Texas and they say, my auto rates, what? I was paying this where I was. So. Okay. So the, I have heard that in some, that Texas has a higher insurance rates 
than some other states, than the, especially from California. When people come here, they're kind of surprised that we pay higher premiums for for auto insurance. Well, is that correct? I can't speak specifically for California because I think we're probably Texas, California, and Florida. I think we're some of the highest premiums in the nation, but we're definitely higher than other places because we do. We have we have tornadoes, we have hurricanes. We have, I mean, hail is so terrible for us. We have such big hail losses every year. No, I was talking for the auto insurance. For auto insurance. So it's it's higher because of that, not because we are great drivers. <laughs> <laughs> we have great drivers in the uh, state, Victor. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know, I know. All right. We uh, got a lot of people on the roadways. It makes a big difference when... And we don't have the texting rules that other states do. You know, you can't even hold your phone in your hand in California. You got to be like on earbuds or something. Yeah. And here, you've seen people going down 75 and they've got their phone on yeah. their steering wheel and they're watching a show. I, I know. I know. I, I think they got something about texting and driving. They passed something like a, three, four years ago or, or five in Austin that you cannot text a drive, but I don't see many people follow, so. No, it's not. So, yeah, okay, so we're going to pay higher premiums then. When <laughs> I just had an accident, I had an accident. Somebody hit me, um, and it wasn't very much, actually. It was just a little bitty place on my front grill. But it ended up, when I took it in, in there, because it took so long to get everything back, what... I would have expected to be about a thousand dollar claim ended up being five thousand dollars. So you know you talk about labor shortages and cost of goods going up, and we you know that's a big a big thing that affects auto rates. What would you advise people when they start looking for insurance agent? All right, for insurance, most of the people they just call one eight hundred number, mm -hmm. and um, they have insurance. And uh, honestly, I learned that the hard way um, that uh, I prefer to have my agent uh, rather than call 800 number. Um, but I mean, if, if you get into an auto accident, is that 1-800 number agent that you talk to that sold you insurance going to talk to you and tell you what to do next? They're not, you know, you don't have a relationship with them. Exactly. Actually, that follows to my next question. What would you advise people to do first thing after they got in auto accident or they got flooded at home, let's say, you know, the pipe burst? Uh, but especially in auto accident, a lot of people, they get panicked. They don't know what to do. What's your advice? Um, if there's any amount of damage, go ahead and call the police. Um, there's different thoughts on this, but in general, they may not come out right away, but you've at least called them. Take pictures of everything. Get a witness statement. Even if you don't think you need it, get a witness statement. Make sure you get all of the info from the other person, like their driver's license number, their insurance card, their name. If it's totally weird, Call the police from the car and don't get out of the car until they get there. We've had those as well, and just wait for them to come, and then they will help you. So those cases are very rare, but it does happen. If you have what's called an uninsured motorist claim, like it's a hit and run, like maybe they've left, definitely call the police. We've heard of other carriers, not ours, but other carriers who will not pay the claim unless you do the police report. So, by the way, I asked about if something happened like a flooding at home or something. So what would be your advice? So that the pictures again, videos? Uh... Definitely take pictures and try to mitigate the loss, which means get the water up off the floor, take whatever steps you need to do to keep the loss from being any bigger than it was, and then you can file the claim with the adjuster and go from there. All right. Well, Thank you, Susanna. Uh, thanks uh, for attending my show. And I will see you around because I know you're a networker. So that's we have <laughs> met. So I for sure going to see you around soon. Yes, yes. Thank you for having me on your show. Thank you for being on my show. This was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Thank you very much.
Investing in real estate offers a wealth of opportunities uh, and the real estate industry has long been a significant factor in economic growth. Real estate investment has proven to be a good source of, um, for wealth and uh, creation. So to secure uh, your future with the help of the real estate, it is, uh, it is an option uh, when uh, you would like to secure your retirement or to have some additional income. The real estate uh, uh, is potential to create multiple income streams. Uh, rental properties, for example, offer a consistent monthly income. Um, all you have uh, to do uh, at the end of the day and on the end of us actually is to collect uh, your rent. But here it is uh, some stuff I would like to talk about. Um, it's not that easy. It sounds easy. Uh, to collect on the end of the month, uh, it's probably going to be much easier to get and hire a good um, real, um, uh, property management company. So if you need any, uh, I always could recommend you. Uh, so um, this is a hassle-free if uh, the good agency manage the property for you. Owning a home is a lifelong dream for many. Having your own property offers security for you and your family. You won't have to pay a monthly bill to a landlord once you own a home. Uh, this is a secure uh, way for you and your family to gain finance and freedom, financial freedom and make your life your own. Keep in, uh, keep in mind, real estate uh, investment have a stable growth. This is a stark contrast compared to stocks uh, and bonds. With proper research, you can identify desirable location that have the potential to appreciate significantly. You can rent your property out or sell it to one that has um, appreciating value. In real estate, you can um, reap twice as much as you have sown. Many of you ask uh, when is a good time to buy an investment house. Well, I would say anytime is a good time. There are many people waiting for the market to crash uh, in order to buy, but uh, many of them have been waiting uh, for a crash for years while marketing has been, uh, has been appreciating. Let's say um, it's always good to buy low and sell high. Yes, absolutely. And eventually... Uh, that's a good strategy when you don't hold on the property. But when you hold on the property, it's not much to um, uh, to wait for a market slowdown. It may not happen in years. So if you go back in history, you will see that in the late uh, 70s of the last century, the national median home value was $35,000 and only for a few years went up to 55000 So bubble, we will say, well, many people were waiting for the bubble to burst at this time, but the median price have never gone back to 35000 So, So secure a better future for you and your loved ones in, in this industry and call us if you need to learn more how to crave a path towards uh, financial growth investing in real estate. So this is all for today. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you on my next podcast.